Bioshock came out in 2007 and everyone was like, ah, yes, yes, this is what shooters were meant to be. More of this, please. The game was extremely successful and raised the bar for first person shooters. The game had a deep narrative, thought provoking ideas and great combat and level design. I mean, Bioshock is considered one of the best games on the seventh console generation. And although a lot of people like to compare this game to System Shock 2, seeing that they were both created by Ken Levine, I really think Bioshock can stand on its own. It does enough differently to differentiate itself from System Shock. It's an extremely creative game, and it's just well done in every aspect. But anyway, if you're new to this game, here are a few basic tips and tricks for people who don't know about this game. So you play as a dude named Jack. Jack only speaks once and all we really know about him is that he's wearing a thick wool sweater and he thinks he's super special. But anyway, you start the game on a plane and it suddenly crashes into the ocean. Being the only person who survives the crash, you swim to a mysterious lighthouse and you enter this pod that takes you down to the bottom of the ocean to discover Rapture, a city built by a dude named Andrew Ryan, a fancy entrepreneur who created Rapture as a utopia for artists and creatives. And it's just a really advanced city that runs on hardcore capitalism. Also, Ryan is really big on sweat metaphors for some reason. Anyway, the second you get there, you realize Rapture has gone to and some dude named Atlas says he'll help you get out if you do a bunch of for him. And that usually involves pissing off Ryan and a bunch of other stuff and, and Nothing weird about it, Every everything's cool. <laughs> now, the thing about Bioshock is that the story isn't in your face all the time. There are barely any cutscenes, and if you ignore all the extra sh the story is super straightforward. But don't get me wrong, there is a very deep and complicated story here, you just have to go look for it. Especially if you want to know why Rapture looks like a toilet exploded. So, if you're expecting the story to be spoon-fed to you, you're gonna have a bad time. So when you first start the game, you get to pick your difficulty. Now, while you can change it later on if things get too tough, for me personally, I always play on easy. No, not because I'm bad at games, although I'm not super great at shooters, but it's because of the morality mechanic. Well, it, it's, it's sort of a mechanic. It's really just, are you gonna be a bitch or not a bitch? Cause there's only three endings. But just play on easy your first time around because it's just more enjoyable to explore and get lost in the story instead of pulling your hair out cause this is your fifth time dying. What the f where did he come? from now about that morality mechanic there are these things running around rapture called little sisters they carry this called adam which is basically the game's experience points the little sisters are protected by big daddies the big things in diver suits that make dying whale noises To get to the Little Sisters, you need to kill their big daddy first, and you'll want to get to the Little Sisters to get Adam to upgrade your shit. So here's the kicker. When you get to the Little Sisters, you have two choices, harvest or rescue. Harvesting kills the Little Sisters, but you get the max amount of Adam, while rescuing them lets them live, but you only get two thirds of the Adam. The game assures you that you need lots of Adam to survive, but if you play on easy, it's not really that necessary. Ha ha, see where I was going with this? But don't f***ing kill the Little Sisters. Yeah. I know there's something right out of a nightmare with their creepy Look, Mr. Bubbles, it's an angel! and the freaky glowing eyes, but you are rewarded if you save them. And you'll feel much better about yourself. Cause even though they look like something from a B-rated horror movie, they are children at heart. Or you could be a total and kill them, you murderer. But eh, do what you want, I guess. So the majority of the story is explained with audio logs that you find all over Rapture. Honestly, I fucking love the audio logs. The characters are interesting and they're always talking about something neat. So really make an effort to find these things. Nothing like shooting people in the head while listening to Ryan's butter smooth voice as he talks about capitalism and killing people. <sighs> of course, I think the game should have changed the way you play them. You have to hold down X slash A. And if you accidentally play one and you've heard it already, you can't f***ing stop it and it can get really annoying really fast. The game is kind of linear too, so finding all of the audio logs isn't exactly hard. Like you'll get these open areas to explore, and while you're only required to go to certain parts, there's extra stuff to check out, but by no means is it overwhelming. So when it comes to combat, it's basic FPS with a dash of RPG crap. You'll get your guns in these things called plasmids, which let you shoot weird shit from your hands and improve certain combat things. Now, picking the best weapons and plasmids is really up to your playstyle. There's a lot to choose from. Like, there's a lightning plasmid, a fire one, ice, telekinesis, hypnosis, wind, bees. Beads. Bees? Beads. Beads. 
but play around with them. You're limited on how many you can have equipped at once, but you'll quickly learn what you're comfortable with. Also, if you're not super big on, look out, bitch, here I come, I'm here to f it up, come into this area, guns a blazing, that's okay. There is room for stealth in this game. Enemies won't attack if they can't see you. So if you wanna be all sneaky sneaky and bash a wrench into someone's skull, you can do that. The game has light RPG elements. Most of it is just picking and choosing what plasmids to buy and equip, so it's not rocket surgery. The weapons upgrade doesn't cost money, though. You'll find these weapon upgrade stations around, and you can increase basic but you can only do one upgrade at a time, and then the station closes. Um, not the best business model, but hey. Just choose wisely when picking an upgrade, you nerd. Search f***ing everything! I'm serious. For some reason, there's good shit in the trash, and Jack will literally eat anything. Enemies will almost always have good stuff on them, so make sure to search bodies afterwards. Also, you can only carry so much cash, too. So be sure to spend it when you start making the big bucks. It never hurts to have too much ammo. And the Circus of Values 2 never gets old. Yeah, never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> hacking. <laughs> While I think it's cool that you can basically hack anything, the mini game takes too long. It's not super complicated, it's just putting the right pieces together to connect the two ends. But there's a lot to hack in this game, and it's just not worth it sometimes. Like, don't hack a stationary bot in an area you've already cleared of enemies, just blow up the thing for god's sake. You'll get these automatic hacks, but I always save those for saves because they're a b to unlock. But if there's one thing I always take the time to hack, it's the flying bots. Oh my god, these guys are so cute! And they're useful too. Always hack one of these babies when you get the chance, because they follow you around everywhere. It's like having a guardian angel, but instead of telling you the word of the Lord, or they just shoot people. Eh, yeah, close enough. F***ing security cameras. I hate these f***ing things. Holy sh**. They're probably the most annoying thing in the game. If you're spotted, you have a few seconds to shoot that thing before it starts sending bots your way. And it's like a whole f***ing minute of flying bots attacking you. Always know where a bot shutdown is. Because spending 20 bucks really quick is way better than dealing with these f***ing God damn it! Like, -ling -ling, I get it, I get it, I f***ed up, I f stop sending bots! What do you- STOP IT! GOD f IT! Fair warning here, if you're easily scared, you're not gonna have the best time. Like, there's some dark in this game. Lots of blood and weird stuff. To the game's credit, it does gradually get less scary once you get used to it. Cause nothing's gonna stop you from shooting something spooky in the face. But the game's opening is honestly the freakiest part. Like, ah oh man, this is so cool, just look at this place! Wait, what? Why is it, why is it getting so dark? What? Ah! Uh, what the f What the f is that thing? Get me out of here! Get past that sh yourself moment and it's smooth sailing from there. Sorta. But for reals, don't play this game by yourself at night in the dark with your headphones on if you get spooked easily. So while Bioshock is one hell of a ride, it's just a fantastic FPS, and it's a game everyone should play. But it's not the perfect game. It comes close, but every game has its flaws. But Bioshock does bring a lot to the table. It's got great writing, and Rapture feels like something that could actually exist. With a tense atmosphere, interesting plot, and freaky little girls, Bioshock is a game that will always be remembered. And I hope this Basics Beginner's Guide makes your gaming experience a little better. So please, rate, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you have a fantastic fantastic day.